So hello guys and welcome back to part two of the Eurostat series. In this part two what we're going to do is actually put the theory from Monday's video in practice and Monday I show you how the API works and into this video we're actually going to get some data from it and create what you see behind me which is the total population of 2019 in Europe and the population change. And we are going to do the visualization that you can see in here. So how about we get started? Okay, so this is actually quite nice. So once in a while, Eurostat just creates uh, statistics about Europe, and this is for Europe regions. I'm going to post the link down below, obviously, so you will be able to get it. And with the visualization, they also post a link to the source. Wonderful. So if we want to recreate this, we just click in here, and it will give us where the data comes from. It will give us actually the table, so the data source in the table format. You can see it here, looks nice. And if we want to get this data into Power BI, if you remember, we have to go to the Eurostat query builder and we need to build that query. If you remember from part one, we need to get the name of the database. And in this case, you can find it either here or in there. So you copy that part. And you put it in the query builder, click next. And you can try to generate the query right away. Sometimes he will do it, sometimes he won't. You can see here that it says there are too many categories, the maximum is 50, so we have to limit this a little bit. We don't want to have this by male or female. And we don't want to have this by age groups, at least not at the moment. So that's the way we want it. And here we get our link. Now, as I mentioned before, this link is for JSON. We need to change that to CSV so it is easier to import it in Power BI. I'm going to copy this. I have already an instance of Power BI open. Web. And we're going to paste the first part. It would be wonderful if they could give us the entire link, but yeah. You need code, I think it's called. And then we need to paste the second part, which is this one, for that specific data set. Click OK, and that should return the table in CSV format. As you can see, transform data. And let's open up in my other screen. Let's bring it here. So here you can see how the data looks like. We're going to do just some simple transformations to get this thing into shape. First of all, this is population at least 2018-19, I think. And uh, we're going to create a data model. So what you can see here, we have the code for the region and then the name, and then we have the population from 2014. Oh, it's 14 to 19. So let's change that to 14. Great. So what we're going to do is get one data or one table is going to be for the population and the other one is going to be for the region. We're also going to represent it in a map. So we want to have latitude and longitude. Okay. So to create this location, what we're going to do is uh, duplicate this table and we are going to First, remove the top rows. To remove the top rows, you could remove the number of rows. You can say remove the first seven rows, but you never know with APIs when that number of rows will change. So it's better to do it like this. You can do remove top rows, and then you put a number here because that's the only way, but we can change this now. So we don't want to remove the first row. We, we wanted to remove is where column one Remove all the columns until you find the column that is called the slice. And that will dynamically remove whatever it is above the slice. Really neat. Um, we're going to now remove the columns. And here we're going to does not contain EU. We don't want to have the totals for the population. We can sum that in Power BI. And the, we don't want to have an A, not applicable. Why should we have that? Okay, good. So 
As you can see here now, we have a flat hierarchy. So we have country, and then we have region, and then we have municipality, and then we have city. And what we want to do is to create a hierarchy that works in Power BI. So we need to put them in columns. So what we're going to do is add column, custom column, and say if text length for a column two is two letters, then it's column three, else no. And this is for country. So the country has a color code, um, a code of two letters. So country, okay. So now we have a list of all countries you can see there. Wonderful. And we're going to do the same for each of the levels. So I'm going to copy these so we don't have to, I don't need to bore you to death with that. The other one, I think I call it, uh, let me see, region. And then the number of columns should be three. And then we we'll do the same. This is uh, municipality. And this is three. Column three, and it's not. Boom, boom. There you go. No, three, no, four. <laughs> four. Yeah, there you go. And then the last one is to have um, five. So, which will be city. Five. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to fill down these ones. And we are going to filter out, you know, the, the hierarchies where they are themselves. And now we have a really flattened hierarchy where we have only five letter code. And then you have country, region, municipality, city. So delete that. Here we have it. This is country code and all of these including uh, all of them are text so wonderful and this is our location table now if we go here to population we need to do something similar first we remove the first rows which means one and we do exactly the same trick as before. Each column one is not slice. So remove everything above slice. Then we're going to use first row as headers. We're going to delete that one. We don't need it. We are going to get rid of does not it's the same filter that we did before. We don't want to have EU and we don't want to have not applicable. And now we don't need to have that. We have that already on the other table. We don't want to have these as the local levels either. So let's say equals two. But in reality, what we want to say is text length is bigger than two. So we are not, not two, bigger than four. So we are filtering all the lower levels. So we don't want to have the population of Belgium because we, we can add that with all the cities in Belgium, okay? So there we have it. Now we have the country code in here and then we have the year. Let's change, no, we can change the name at the end. So what we need to do is now, because we have year 2014, 15, 16, da, 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 what we need to do is to put it, you know, to put the columns as rows. And to do that, you go here to add column, not to transform and pivot other columns. And then we're going to get a column for year and then a column for the actual population. And we're going to call these 
year and then we're going to call this population how about we call it pop only <laughs> because probably as a measure we're going to use population we are going to get rid of the blanks don't want any blanks and as you can see here there is it has notes and the notes are explained here up there in the source so it says um there b makes break in the time series p provisional e estimated so not that we're going to use it but who knows what we're going to do is split this thing so there and then this is going to continue your population but this is going to be notes okay so if somebody wants to read the notes there they are but we want to have this population as a number so we need to have them like that this is going to be a number two this is going to be called country code and because these locations are not available in the Bing maps, when you plot these, you're going to run into trouble. The country name it will do, or city will do okay, but you know, there are European city names that exist in other continents, so we need to have latitude and longitude. I couldn't find, and I talked to Eurostat, and they told me that they do not have latitude and longitude for their location, as a source, but they gave me the files. Now, I asked them if I could share and they didn't really get a response. So I don't know if I can't share it with you. So if you want, let me know and I will ask again and make see if, if they can give it to me. So what I got, it was, you know, the code, country code, latitude and longitude of each region. So I can plot it. So now that we're having that in there, what I'm going to do is to merge it to our location table. Uh, location? No, we're going to merge the latitude and longitude with that code. And latitude, longitude. So there we have it. This has got to be in decimal numbers. So there you go, close and apply. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. And that location table you can always use for any Eurostat um, report that you want to do. So that is quite useful to do it right from the beginning so you can reuse them basically. You can maybe create it as a data flow and then consume it for all your Eurostat reports. That could be something. So here we have our population and location. Wonderful. Now remember what you wanted to what we wanted to create, which is these. So we need the map, and then the balls are um, this municipality. I think it is, and then you have the total population, share population, and population change. We have total population for now. Um, so I have disabled the recognition of um, relationships because it always, you know, messes up with more complex models. So we're going to get rid of this one in here because we're going to use our location table. Year should not be summarized. Don't, please. And then we have population by now we've got latitude and longitude so we can actually put that but before we do it we need to categorize it as such latitude and longitude okay so now let's try to visualize this we're going to first get rid of this implicit measure we're going to call population which is the sum of pop there we have it and now that we have that we are going to hide the implicit measure there you go and if we go look here they have here if you can look at the map the the size of the 
dots, they are actually not the population, but the population change. And then you see it here in the legend, right? Uh, so the rather the um, oh, oh, it's interactive. How cool is that? Mm. Okay, so the rather the um, the bold, the higher the population change, and for that they have actually another source. We're going to look into that in just a second. Here, where they give you, here they give you the the difference in total, but in this data source you can actually find the ratio, which is what they show here, and you can see it on the bubble is the 2.8 per 1,000 inhabitants. So we have actually two choices. We can actually we can either go in here and grab that data and represent it with from the API, or because we actually have the population of um, 2018, 15, 16 already in here, we can actually cal make that calculation ourselves. So for the purpose of learning some DAX on Friday, how about we do the population change calculation on the DAX Fridays uh, on Friday, and then we will finish this up. And it will give you the possibility to try to do that calculation yourself. So how about that? So try it yourself at home, and then on Friday we will finish this up. Okay? So I hope you're enjoying this so far. I am definitely... The amount of information you have in here is just absolutely wonderful. So if you want to know more about Eurostat, you have the link to the video here where I explain how the API works, and then there is no reason for you not to start doing some serious market research for Europe. So I will see you on Friday. We will finish this up. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.